One of the questions I get asked the most about indie film distribution is how to create closed caption files. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the easiest way to get these done. I wanna start this video by saying that I have self-distributed my film through Amazon Prime Video Direct as well as Film Hub. So what I'm gonna do here is going to work on both of these platforms and most likely other platforms as well. However, closed caption files are pretty universal, so you should be able to use this tutorial anywhere that requires captions. You will 100% need to create closed captions for your film if you're going to try to get on any major platform. Every platform, with the exception of YouTube or Vimeo, requires you to have a closed caption file. If you are looking to self-distribute through Amazon Prime or Film Hub, like I did, you are definitely going to need one of these. Long ago in a faraway YouTube land, I used to recommend that if you couldn't afford to pay somebody to do the closed caption files that you could create them yourself. And the following years, I was met with a lot of comments and emails from people who started having QC problems after doing this. I wanna say on the record that I no longer recommend creating closed caption files yourself. That's fine if you're doing this on YouTube or Vimeo where the requirements and all that don't matter as much, but for any professional platforms like Tubi, Amazon, Apple, and such, you're gonna wanna get these professionally made. I personally like Rev.com. I've been using Rev for about five years now, and I've yet to have any QC problems with either of these platforms. Full disclosure, I do have an affiliate link in the description of this video if you decide to use this service. It helps me a lot with creating these videos, but you're absolutely not required to use it, or if you wanna use some other service, that's fine too. Or if you want to use Rev and just not use my affiliate link, 100% okay with that too. However, if you do want to use my link, of course I'm going to love you for it. So let's get into actually creating the closed caption files. Before we get started, we need to look at the requirements for both Amazon and Film Hub. I have both of these linked in the description for easy reference. Now I will say if you use a service like Rev.com, you can pretty much forgo all of this because the files that they create will 100% work on their service. And the same goes for Film Hub, but it's good to review this and be familiar with it if you are trying to attempt to do this yourself and not listen to me, but let's just go over this really quickly. So for the United States, you need to have a separate caption files in the localized language. For the United Kingdom, you need to have audio or captions in the localized language, as well as Germany. And if you are doing this in Japan, you need to have burned in subtitles in the localized language. And it says, for example, if you created a movie in English and you wanna have German closed captions, here are how your movie will be impacted in each location. U.S., you will not be able to publish your movie with German captions. You are required to have separate English CC file. United Kingdom, you can publish your movie with German uh, closed captions because the film already has an English audio track. Germany, you can publish in Germany because you have added a localized German closed caption file. Japan, you will need to burn in Japanese subtitles into the movie. Closed captions aren't toggle-able for customers in Japan, so even if you upload German closed captions, for the movie, it will not be visible to customers. And here's some additional requirements. All captions must conform to match the video source, obviously. All dialogue in video files requires captions in the native language for the content. English captions are required for all titles published in the United States. For an example, in a movie listed as available in the United States, all dialogue in English or any other language spoken in the movie must have corresponding English captions. I'm gonna skip this next one. All time text needs to start at the zero our time code, obviously. Prime Video only accepts captions files that are UTF-8 character encoded. When working with third-party captions provider, please ensure that captions output the UTF-8 encoded. We provide a collection of sample files for various caption file formats. Again, you should be able to accomplish this on Rev. If you have both captions and subtitles available for a title, we prefer to receive closed captions slash HCH to improve the viewing experience for customers who are deaf and hard of hearing. The language of a title's metadata determines the locations to which it can be published. A mezzanine or caption file matching the metadata language is required to publish to that location. And then they have some information about what type of file that you can use. They have a whole bunch listed here, but we are going to focus on the dot SRT file because that is the most universal between all these platforms. And then they have some other information for subtitles and content without dialogue. If you wanna read that, again, this is linked in the description. I'm not gonna be going over it here because I assume that you are making a silent film and you aren't using a lot of subtitles. But if you are, the information is obviously here as well. Okay, so that is all the information for the 
captions on Amazon. So we're gonna move over to Film Hub now. These are pretty much gonna be the same, but we're gonna go over a few different things. We require all content be submitted with English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, SDH. So when you see SDH on Film Hub or Amazon, that's what they're talking about. They talk about why they require this, but we're not gonna go over that. You can read that on your own if you want. We just wanna get right into the requirements. We prefer the subrip, which is the .srt format in plain UTF-8, which is exactly what Amazon requires too. And they also have one other acceptable file that you can use, but we're not gonna use that. Single line max, 43 characters, unbreak subtitles shorter than 43 characters. Here's a couple other requirements, but Again, since we're creating these in Rev, we're not gonna worry about that too much. They do have some stuff for mixed language titles. I'm not familiar with that, so I'm not comfortable talking about it. But if you do have mixed language, there is some information here about that. And they do have some tips and tricks for submitting. But again, we're not gonna worry about that too much because this is a pretty easy to follow tutorial and this should work for you. So now let's go into actually creating the closed captions. So we're gonna go to rev.com which you're gonna to wanna to make an account. So go ahead and make an account. I'm gonna log into mine. Now, when you log into Rev, you're gonna be met with all of your other files. So I've created a bunch, as you can see here. So there's a testament to how well this works for me. They recommend, or they say they have like 99% accuracy. I found that to be pretty much true. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but let's go ahead and kind of talk about how you're going to do this. So when you log into Rev, or a place like Rev if you're not using Rev. But with Rev specifically, we're gonna go into place a new order and then we're going to select one of these. Now they do have a few different options here, human transcripts, AI transcripts, human captions, AI captions, and then global subtitles. Now they do have different pricing for each of these. So we're not gonna focus on the transcriptions, we're just interested in the captions. So for the AI captions, they will do it for 25 cents per minute. Now for a human, it's gonna cost you $1.50 per minute. I've never personally used the AI captions before, but it is a very good option for what I'm about to show you next once we actually get into after they actually do their captions. So if you're looking to save a bunch of money, I guess you could do that, but I've only personally used the human-based captions. So choose wisely, I guess. So I'm just gonna pick AI captions for now. And then from here, you're either going to upload your file. So if you have your main video file, if it's like a smaller H.264 file or something, that's 100% okay. If you have a link that's online, you can do that too. Or you can pull the video directly from YouTube or Vimeo. So those are definitely viable options as well. Uh, I don't remember exactly what I did. I wanna say that I uploaded the file. So you do have the ability to do that. And then this is per the 25 cents or the dollar 50 is per minute. So for an example, my movie is about 118 minutes long. So for the AI captions at 118 minutes, that would put me at about 30 bucks. And for the human captions, that would put me at about $180 ish. So you can see that's a pretty big difference with the AI. They say they can do it within 98% accuracy. So if you need to save a little bit of money, I guess, you know, you do have that option available to you, but you may have to do more editing work. So once you decide on whatever file that you're gonna upload, you'll add your file, you'll sign in if you're not already signed in, and then it'll tell you what it's going to cost you, and then you'll pay for it. And then after that, it'll say, oh, this is gonna take 24 hours, 48 hours, something like that. I usually have gotten all my files back within a day, and that's even with the human. So just know it may take a couple of days, but this service has always been relatively fast for me. And then once you actually get the file, it's gonna show up on here. You'll, pro you'll get an email for it, but you can also just log into your account and then you're going to have, you know, it's gonna show up on this main screen here. Now, the nice thing about Rev, and I'm sure many of these other companies too, is that you're able to double check your files before you actually download them. So if something isn't right, you're able to pull up this caption editor. So you just select the movie and then you're actually able to, you can see we got the whole screen here. So I'm gonna turn the audio down, but if I were to play, now my captions are gonna show up here and I can double check everything is spelled correctly and all that. So this is where using the AI one may be okay because you have the ability to double check all the captions are done. So they're gonna make sure that the captions are done properly as far as formatting, making sure 
you know, what, like, as you can see here on screen, it says anxious electronic music. So there is some requirements on what they need to use. And then also on this next caption right here, you can actually see a character's name. They do ask if you have like a script or, you know, a list of characters and stuff like that. Anything that would help them out, you can absolutely upload that as well because I didn't get very far in the purchasing process. It didn't pop up for me. But if you do have a script available or just some sort of sheet with all of your characters' names and all that, it definitely helps them, but it's not required. And then there are some additional things you can do. So we have the original version. You can change the atmospherics if you need to. You can replace casual words with formal. For an example, gonna to going to, which is something I've done before. Replacing US words with UK spelling. And removing gaps between captions, you do have all these options to do that before you actually download the file. And then they do have some keyboard shortcuts. You can actually search for certain words, spelling check, etc. But once you're done, everything's edited and everything's exactly how you want it, you'll be able to download your file. So we're gonna go to the top right corner here, select download. And this is where you're gonna be able to download whatever file type you need. So it's gonna ask you which file types you need, but I don't know why they do that when they just give you all the options anyway, but we want the .srt file format. So you'll be able to select that wherever that is. Let's look for it real quick. It's the first option. So they make that very easy for you. They have some advanced options here on when you want to start it. We need to start this at zero hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. This should match the frame rate of your movie. So whatever file you upload, make sure that's the frame rate that you want across the board on every single platform and it should match. Then you just hit download and then you just download it like a normal file. And that's pretty much it. It's really, really simple. That's why I recommend doing it. With the new AI options, they make it a little bit cheaper. So that way, if you know you need to save a little bit of money, you have the ability to do that and still get your captions professionally made. That's all the basics for closed caption files. But now let's get into some of the most common issues you may run into when creating these. So the issue that I see the most with filmmakers is that their closed caption files do not sync properly with their film. There is a simple fix for this and I'm gonna show you it right now. So I have Premiere Pro open right now. I have my film and I imported my .srt file. Now you can see here it says 30 frames per second, but honestly, they all say 30 frames per second. It should still match whatever frame rate that you uploaded with. So what I'm gonna do, I have my video file on its own timeline. I'm going to add the closed captions to the timeline. And then you just want this to start at the time sort the source code time. And then up here, you should see all of your closed caption files show up. So now what you're going to want to do, go through your film and make sure everything matches. So once you go through, double check all your captions, make sure everything's aligned how you want, you'll be able to export your film which you don't actually have to export the entire film. You could just export the closed caption file or you could just export a low res version of this. But in the export settings, you have this caption setting here and it will export in the .srt format. Just select create sidecar file and it'll create a file just like we downloaded from rev.com. And from there, it should match your frame rate. Now you're gonna wanna double check that this still matches inside the platforms Amazon makes this a little bit difficult, but you should be able to do this inside of Film Hub. They have a native video player. Once you upload your film and the captions, they have a video player and you can double check, make sure everything lines up. From there, you can take it to Amazon and assume that everything's gonna work fine if you get that error. And the next most common error is the frame rate error within your closed captions. Again, inside Premiere, if your frame rate is not correct, like mine is not currently, um, like I said, you're able to move all your captions around. So if you got to move them around a little bit to make a match, you're able to do that pretty easily. And then just follow the same process for actually exporting the .srt file. There are a few less common issues that I won't get into here, but I will link resources to both Amazon and Film Hub in the description if you do run into anything that I haven't talked about. But feel free to let me know if you have any questions or issues inside the comments. Shoot me an email that's linked to my bio and I will answer them as best as I possibly can. And of course, if you are looking to take the next steps and upload your film to Amazon or Film Hub, I do have a couple of video tutorials right here for both of those platforms on how to do that successfully. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.